Hi traders, welcome to Admiral Markets webinar. My name is Chris. We're going to take a look at Forex strategy, candlesticks uh, at support or resistance and using Fibonacci patterns as well. First, be, be aware though that this webinar is shown to a global audience. Please take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact for appropriate entity for more details and to find out if it is suitable for you. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered higher risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar and uh, later on video is for information and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, as always, you can sign up for more webinars uh, basically through education. Click on Forex and CFD webinars and uh, you'll find, of course, the list for uh, the current and next week and perhaps the rest of the month even. Uh, if you're interested in knowing, it's always good, by the way, to take a look also at the calendar, uh, I should say, to take a look what kind of news events are coming up. Uh, for instance, uh, today is Wednesday and there should be FOMC, for instance, uh, on the, in the U.S., that's always good to know and, and you know, trade accordingly, change your plan accordingly and be uh, on guard for that, all right? Other things I wanted to mention besides the webinars uh, are basically our courses here at the bottom of education, articles, and of course analytics, you'll find at the top, plus other tools, and uh, obviously also the MT4 Supreme Edition. What are those things that we use in this webinar is often actually the Keltner indicator right there as you can see and the yeah, Keltner indicator is basically uh, a very good example of support and resistance is dynamic it moves along without us really adjusting anything so that's a benefit it's uh, it's just something that kind of uh, automatically calculated through the indicator it spots basically support and resistance on both ends it shows extremes as price reaches basically uh, either a bounce or break spot. If it breaks through the Keltner, then there could be some momentum coming up. But if it bounces, there could actually be a retracement, maybe a reversal. So it's a strong indicator, and uh, I like the ones that are moving automatically like this. Of course, we can use static ones like fibs, tops and bottoms, fractals. Those are useful too. So today I wanted to, and I promised yesterday, take a look basically at daily charts, but higher time frames in fact. And take a look at how uh, basically reversals uh, or any, well, basically any kind of reaction to major support resistance levels can be traded, uh, particularly bounces maybe uh, in this particular webinar, and uh, how you can optimize the reward to risk once a trade is taken. Because, you know, a daily candle is pretty big, so at times there could be a huge reversal coming up, but. Uh, Maybe, for instance, there could be a better entry or a better exit within that bounce trade. So we're going to take a look at that as well um, in this particular session. Uh, all right, let's start with, I don't mind really any chart. Let's take a look at pound yen. Maybe, for instance, doesn't really matter, to be honest. So first step is support or resistance. We need to know where's the key levels. We can use that. We can really use many methods for that. This is a, uh, a Pandora box, we, we, Pandora box, which really uh, could be probably 500 ways of looking at this. But uh, a classical way is to use trend channels, indeed trend lines, uh, just to locate the major uh, kind of channel lines that uh, are important for uh, the currency. So let's see if we can find an example. Well, how about connecting these bottoms like this, right? So if price is approaching this support level, I should make that blue or green so it makes more sense. All right, like this. So that's one reason uh, we don't have the weekly pivot points from last week, so we won't use those. But let me take a yeah, good. Let me get rid of those. But uh, basically, we could put a fib from here to here, right? And uh, we see that price is at the 78.6 fib, so, or close to it. So this is how we can add some kind of uh, tools to see what are key levels uh, as a support of resistance. We don't even need necessarily the fib, but I think it's pretty pretty useful to uh, to gain kind of an idea where 
yeah, where the, the key levels are for potential bounces. So trend line though, trend channels, moving averages, Keltner, Bollinger Bands, uh, tops and bottoms, all of these, Murray Math, Fractal, I mean, you can use them. Uh, I wouldn't use all of them, but uh, all of them are, are good examples. Let's stick to the Keltner and the trend line for the moment. All right, so let's consider this to be a key support zone when looking at daily candles. Okay, once again, I want to take a look at a bit higher time frames, at least for the beginning part. So daily candle, price is approaching this support level. This is, in our view, a key spot. Price has tried to break through uh, the Keltner, but not with really success, I would say. It has not really broken below it as yet. So it's still a bounce or break spot. So this is the support of resistance zone I wanted to talk about. All right. So uh, let's talk now about the candlestick reaction to the zone. All right. So first of all, let me zoom in and take a look at how price is reacting as it approaches this level. So we see bullish candle, bearish candle, bullish, bearish, bullish. So now we have to look for basically, we can look for candlestick patterns or just plain simple candles that we think are strong enough to signal a bounce. We could look for a break perhaps too. It really depends whether you're a breakout trader or you rather uh, trade bounces. Uh, if you're more of a reversal trader, because in a way uh, this can be seen as a reversal. I mean, price has been moving down before that, as you can see. So the reaction up in a way is a reversal, although the, the, you know, the larger trend could still be up. All right. So I thought I had my drawing to open, but Apparently not. One second, folks. All right, there we go. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, basically, one could consider the trend up because we have a you know bullish trend line, right? So this, from this perspective, the bounce up could be considered with the trend. However, if you look at this particular piece, we can see that the bounce up is actually going against that particular downside momentum so you know even concepts like trend reversal are quite uh, how do you say it uh, they depend on the circumstances in a way and how you interpret those right is this the reversal or, or continuation pullback within the trend so it's, it's maybe not that important I would consider it still a pullback within the trend because of the, uh, the the trend channel, the uh, the larger uptrend, but basically it's a bullish bounce and hence also a reversal compared to this. All right. As you can see, we got a pretty strong reversal. In any case, what candle would be, uh, in your view, the best to trade, or is there any trade that you think that could be worth trading? It's a question, right? Do you see? Obviously, bearish candles do not give any uh, information. We're looking at bullish candles. So from my point of view, I can already tell you that this one would not be interesting uh, because of the fact that price has missed the trend line by a tad. All right, so that's not something I think is interesting. So from my perspective, the best candlestick is this one. All right, it's a clear reaction, a candle close near the high. It engulfs the previous one or almost engulfs it. It's a clear momentum candle to the upside. This one is an inside candle compared to the previous one. Uh, it is okay. It could be even seen as a bounce. That could be sufficient. In fact, this one, the next one is a bit better though, in my view. But there are some that definitely would go with this one. And if you look at the uh, time factor, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh candle, if you're looking at time factor pattern, it would be this candle. That candle shows that the previous low has not been broken after five to six candles and that the entry would be on this candle. So there are three options, I think, that are all have their own merits, their own advantages, and I think all three could be possible. And uh, that's how a trade could be taken. Let's say the trade was taken right here on the daily chart, entry right there, stop loss would perhaps go below the low or below the bottom. We're looking at, a, a, you know, a, basically a stop loss of about 250 pips. Let me double check that quickly. Yeah, roughly 250. 
and uh, up price goes and at this moment it reached about 540 so you do have a two to one reward to risk ratio there but if you aim for a one to one you would have exited about on this candle right here so one to one is fine in most cases if you're looking for reversals a one to one ratio is pretty good if you're looking at trend continuations you know you could actually consider uh, higher uh, reward to risk ratios like a two to one so how can you optimize it how can you optimize basically reward to risk ratio um, you know we, we talked about now we talked about support or resistance what is the key zone what kind of candlestick patterns do we want to see uh, to trade it we talked a bit about this example at least and then the next step is how do we enter and exit how can we optimize it this is one way plain and simple trade the candle close uh, look for a one-to-one, -one, for instance, put the stop loss below uh, the candle or the, or the bottom and, and look for a one-to-one. -one. Very simple. Candle close, entry, boom. Stop loss below it, one-to-one, two-to-one, that's it. Right? One-to-one -one if it's a reversal, two -to maybe two-to-one in this case, right? because you can see the uh, larger trend is up. So might we want to take a bit more risk on this, be more aggressive with the exit. Fine, right? But how can we improve potentially on this there are a couple of ways i think that uh, one is basically looking for a pullback you can do that by putting a fib on this now you might miss the trade because price could just keep going up but that's that's part of trading then you get a better reward to risk if you take the 61.8 fib with the entry here for instance and then if you exit exit the minus 61.8 fib then you got about 480 pips for 70 versus a 160 risk and that's a three to one reward to risk so that's uh less i should say uh higher chance that you might miss a trade but also better reward to risk instead of one to one you get three to one instead of two to one you get three to one so that's one thing you could do wait for the pullback wait for the correction to a fib the other thing could be to look at a lower time frame Let's do that right now. There we go. And take a look if, for instance, probably here, not, sorry, let me, there we go. All right, daily candle closed here. So look at the four hour candle and try to understand if an immediate breakout and follow through is likely. Is there some local support or resistance levels uh, that could stop price from moving higher and we see a 144 EMA we see a long-term moving average for instance so there's a good chance that price might bounce off that zone we see Admiral Keltner we see resistance spots on the left so you know those are all fair reasons why price might make that retracement on a four-hour chart so zooming in one time frame could help us understand the market structure and see if there will be some kind of discount that we can get on a lower time frame uh, that we perhaps don't see on a higher time frame because we're zoomed out we see a different kind of structure on a four hour chart we see kind of the, uh, the details and information about the upside and the bounce that we wouldn't see on a daily chart so there's fair value in, in looking at at this particular time frame and saying hey is there going to be some way for me to get a better entry uh, one could even of course try to enter at a different you know through a different trigger one could try to enter uh, upon the reaction to a fib so if we put a fib we're expecting your tracement for instance because of the the things i mentioned or we're at least waiting for it price makes the pullback to the 61.8 fib and i just lost my pound yen that's strange one second i hit some wrong button there Huh. All right, doesn't matter. Uh, in the meantime, no, uh, Angel, good to see you. And didn't miss gold yet. We just started with the pound yen, in fact. And uh, FOC, yes, economy slightly in need. Uh, but also some dips there. I, I think it's a tough call for uh, for anyone, in fact. 
it's not going to be an easy environment, I think, uh, in the next couple of years regarding you know the improvement of the economy. It's been it's been overall, of course, trending up. It seems to be slugging a bit sluggish at the moment, but let's see. All right, daily chart. There we go. Trend line like this. Zooming into the four-hour chart, we can use a fib from here to here, and instead of taking the fib. 61, we can wait for a reaction, for instance. We can wait for a engulfing twin like this. And uh, in fact, if the engulfing twin is too large, we could wait for a retracement of that. So we could take basically the fib of the fib, and this is how you can use fibs for discounts and getting a better entry, basically. And you can put a fib from here to here, like this. This was the 61.8 reaction, but the reaction was pretty sturdy. So we can say, okay, let's not take this entry, but let's wait for a bit of a discount at the 50 fib. And before you know it, you could take a 50 fib entry at 140.80, put the stop loss below 139.80, you got about a 110 uh, stop loss. And you could still aim for the original target at the minus 61.8. It's still possible to keep the original target. So you reduce the risk to 100 pips. The target is uh, 144.80, and there you got 400 pips profit versus a 100 risk, right? So that's a 4 to 1 reward to risk. So all of a sudden, you quadrupled or you doubled your reward to risk ratio. That's very lucrative. If you catch one of those, that's very good for the equity curve. If you're risking 1%, you just made 4% instead of 2 or 1, obviously. So is this hypothetical? Actually not. It's by coincidence that I started on this pound yen. I didn't plan it this way. But this is something we actually discussed uh, when this was happening uh, in the 20th of June. We talked about the bounce at the FIB. We talked about that this engulfing twin uh, was too big and that you can look for a discount of that candle and, and I would expect a continuation. So this is all done pre-fact live at the time. Uh, we're using this now as an example for strategy, but it was also actually discussed live in anal analysis as well. You can look at the videos that were recorded on YouTube and if you want to confirm it, check it out, see if what I'm saying is correct, uh, no problem, right? So this was a live example as well. So this is basically, uh, a, I think, a good example of a reaction to a support zone. Basically, a reaction to the decision zone, candlesticks that confirm it, and then hunting for an entry using fibs. Pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, the process, of course, doing it live, real time, pre-fact is always different than looking at past examples, but. This is how we work. This is how we have to, of course, um, sh you know, show some examples to give a clue about how one could trade um, this kind of bounces, for instance, on daily time frames. Uh, the best FIB, well, I think that uh, if it depends on circumstances. If you're looking for a retracement, a simple, a simple retracement of a strong candle, the 38 or 50 FIB could be uh, fine. Typically, 61.8 is always very sweet because it's a golden ratio. Uh, and if you're looking for a deep retracement on the swing, for instance, like this, then the 78.6 FIB could be good. So it, it's difficult to say. It really depends on the circumstances. If it's a strong momentum and price is going sideways like this, then the 38.2 FIB is often uh, the best. If price is making a zigzag like this, then the 50, 61, or 78.6 FIBs are best. Probably the 50 and 61.8. So it's, it's a bit difficult to say, generally speaking. And of course, we could even, in theory, zoom into the hourly chart. And uh, basically try to take an entry on a different way. Instead of the, the FIB, take maybe the breakout like this, right, of this trend line. So rather than taking the pullback, we can take the breakout. This is basically, just to give you a perspective, this is basically the bounce, retracement, pullback, and continuation, but all on a lower time frame, okay? And uh, the continuation part, 
All right. Uh, let's see. This looks like a decent one-hour candle. I don't see great one-hour candles in this particular breakout. But here, with the stop loss below this bottom, right, and we reduce the, the risk a bit, not that much, though, to about 90 pips. Uh, this candle, about 70. So there's not much change. Uh, the, of course, the reward, if we keep the same stop uh, target in mind, would then increase from about 4 to 1 to about 5 to 1 again. But this is all assuming that we use the same target. And um, if, you low, if you zoom into these lower time frames, you might want to think about different time, sorry, different targets, just because price is choppier and, you know, from this perspective, you might not want to hold on to such a long trade if you're trading on the hourly chart. So that all depends on how much patience you have. If you hold on to the original target, as you can see, uh, you can... By zooming in, you can get try to get a better uh, entry, more precise entry, more precise uh, stop loss, and therefore uh, smaller lot size. Now, this is not something I would definitely not recommend to do on a continuous basis. Uh, this is basically using a daily setup, but lower time frames to refine an entry. It's totally different than looking at a one-hour chart and thinking that's, that it's the same. This is basically a daily time frame setup. And hence, there is, it's kind of a stronger setup. So therefore, it has more value on the lower time frame as well. Uh, if we do this particular uh, technique on all, every time on the hourly chart, it would not work out because price will not be in a, in a good situation to, to hit the 5 to 1 R to R. This is not something that is normal or typical or we should expect as an average. Certainly not. Don't get me wrong. But because we're looking at a daily chart and we think that because of our analysis, this is a high likely reversal zone, you know, that makes it more appealing to, uh, to keep the original target and try to hunt for a better entry on lower time frames like the four hour and the one hour chart. All right. So just want to make, make it clear that, um, you know, we shouldn't be doing this continuously on, on the hourly chart. Five to ones are, are definitely not something that uh, sell by necessarily every every hour. <laughs> so as you can imagine, so that's just one example. Uh, this is in a way a reversal with the trend. We can take a look at a, a pure reversal, classical reversal that's going against the trend. Uh, for instance, uh, how about the pound yen here is approaching this top. So let's make that more intuitive and make that red. So as price approaches it, broke above the Keltner, kept pushing above it, now approaching the top. So how is price going to respond to that resistance level, right? How is it going to be reacting to that? And uh, is it going to be a bounce or break? It's the first time that it's approaching. So from that perspective, a bounce is more likely. Um, and there are other factors that are important too, by the way. We're going to release a, a special article on that, by the way, uh, throughout the weekend. So you might want to check out uh, AdmiralRockets.com and keep an eye on, uh, on, on this particular article that you can find here, by the way. Let me show you. Right here, go to Analytics, then click on this. All right, should be released on Sunday. And uh, basically, it kind of explains how to make this kind of calculation regarding uh, support and resistance and how to understand if a bounce or break is more likely also taking into account uh, basically the price action and the strength of the price action all right so that's a, a full article explaining that we've talked about this in the webinar as well but there's an article coming up so you know from this perspective i think yeah strong momentum but first approach uh, so probably slightly leading to some reaction some reversal reaction there so uh, we can wait for some candlestick pattern, right? The first step is identifying key decision zone that we did. That's done. Second step, wait for candlestick pattern reaction. That has happened. Look at this bearish candle engulfing twins here. So that would be the reaction, right? So a classical approach would be an entry at the candle close right here. Like this. 
stop loss above the top or candle high, right? And target could be a one-to-one. -one. Uh, in this case, it's a reversal, so it might be prudent, might be good to, to do that. Stop loss is about 130 or 150, depending if you use top or uh, the candle high. So with one-to-one, -one, we're looking at basically exiting on this candle, yes, on this candle. Well, you can see the price went way further than that. In fact, I mean, if we would have kept the trade, there was a maximum of 800 pips to be gained on this, and uh, using a trail stop loss would have been sweet, but not all reversals go that far. Let's try to find an example where the reversal does not go as far, just to uh, give a balanced kind of perspective. But uh, could there have been a way to find a better entry with lower time frames, for instance. Uh, let's take a look right here. All right, there we go. All right, that's where price closed throughout the day. So long term moving average is pretty far. Uh, basically, uh, we see a continuation of this momentum and uh, as always, as I said before, one of the things we can always do is put a fib and look for a pullback. So there you go, 50 fib entry right here with a stop loss above the top would give us about 120. All right, and if we keep the same one-to-one -one ratio in mind, hang on, let me calculate that quickly. Then we're looking at uh, 140, 144.80. All right, so 144.80, 210 pips. If we keep the same daily reward to risk ratio. So it's about a two to one. So it's about a two to one reward to risk if we use this FIB. Uh, if we wait for a reaction to the FIB, uh, maybe this, this bearish candle, for instance, right? And we put the stop loss just above it, it might be a loss because it wicked out here. So let's take a look at that. High is 23. So you want to go about 15 to 25 pips above a high. A high. So 147, 147.30 probably. Uh, and I would, this particular wick would not have taken you out. So this candle would have survived. Uh, I think that uh, this candle could be okay. This candle could be also fine as it breaks below basically this support level like this. So I think those are all pretty fair options. These three are pretty good candles to enter. Uh, and uh, you, of course, reduce the risk like this to 60 pips, 80 pips, etc. So the reaction at the FIB would be uh, another way uh, to trade it. Uh, one more, you could be very creative with this. You can use Ichimoku, you can use, for instance, let's see, one second, parabolic, like this. So as price breaks below it, you can see there's a breakout, for instance. It's a bit slow though, it would have to be on this candle. Um, but those are all ways for kind of finding the continuation rather than trading the pullback uh, on this uh, four-hour chart. So you're waiting for, you're trying to trade, basically zooming in, trying to trade this, this daily reversal. You can even do that on the hourly chart. You can try to trade moving averages there as well. There we go. Uh, let me use quickly my own template, sorry for that, but I'll just take a look at how that looks like. I want to see the moving averages, and otherwise I have to add them one to by one. It would take a bit more time, so this is a bit quicker. 
Uh, let's see. So you can see we had this fib on this swing high. We were looking for a reaction to the fib. Yeah, so my one hour methodology would be looking for an entry actually here. You could take this as well as a reversal. Uh, but I would be looking for trading the continuation, which would be here basically. So this is the, the follow through pullback continuation. I would trade this candle right here. And I would be 35 pips stop loss, aiming for the minus 61.8 target, about 120. So it would be about a 30 to 1, I guess, 40 pips risk, 120. So this would be my breakout scenario. We would have the daily reaction, and here it would be already on a downtrend on the hourly chart. Right? This could be also signals right here with these red arrows, uh, but the moving averages are not aligned as yet, so it would be, have to be kind of a, an early setup. Uh, it's possible, but the, the moving averages are here the best aligned as you can see. All right, I was just curious. Uh, let's see, how to make Keltner MAs. Keltner MAs, I think that the middle Keltner is already MA. This one is like a 21 EMA here in the middle. Let me know if that answers your question. I'm not 100% sure there. So you can scan daily charts, basically. They're not going to, of course, occur as, many, as much, as, as frequent as setups, different strategies, uh, setups that um, are looking at lower time frames. Specifically, if you're looking at bounces on a daily chart and not looking at breakouts, then, of course, it's against a smaller set of options that we have. Uh, here you can take a look at odd USD and say, okay, for instance, here we're in a channel like this, maybe not the best channel, but okay. All right, and price is approaching resistance. So we're looking for a candlestick pattern that uh, indicates the price is bouncing, reversing at that resistance. I think that from this perspective, probably this bearish candle would count. Then we're looking for uh, the reaction to that, sorry, the pullback, the better way to enter perhaps the standard way would be the candle close, Stop loss above the candle high and aiming for a one to one, for instance, right? But there we go. We would be perhaps looking for a better way on a one hour, four hour chart by looking at pullbacks, continuations, uh, breakouts, breakouts of moving averages, breakouts of trend lines, pullbacks to fibs, reactions of fibs. You can mix all these tools to look for uh, one of the, the entries that you think you feel comfortable with, the one of the entries that you think that uh, makes the most sense from a reward to risk perspective as well. And you can see it again, a pullback to the 50, 61.8 fib, and then a continuation. And from this perspective, uh, the stop loss is only about max 40 pips, and the target is about 80. So you're looking at about a 2 to 1 reward to risk ratio, as typical for a 61.8 FIB to minus 61.8 FIB target. Uh, let's take a look at the breakout. You could trade, try to trade the breakout instead. For instance, on the hourly chart. In this case, that would not have been that much better, in fact. Uh, if you're taking a market order, if you're taking a pending order, you might have you know, a stop loss, sorry, an entry below these candle lows, below the weekly pivot point as well. You could have a pending order, for instance, here, and that would be, in this case, uh, a better reward to risk ratio. But it's about still two to one, in fact. If you wait for the candle to close, then you're not, because it's such a big candle, you're not looking at really any type of reward to risk ratio that is that great. Because the candle itself has moved so much. So it depends. If you're trading with the trend, you got a lot more space to use, obviously. Which means that you can aim for a lot better reward to risk ratio. If you're trading reversals, uh, one-to-one on a daily chart would probably make the most sense. And if you zoom in, 
then the max you could probably get out of it is a 2 to 1. Maybe more, but then you're actually counting on a reversal rather than a major reversal, I should say, rather than a small retracement type of environment structure. Whereas if you trade with the trend, it's easier to translate that one to one into two to one, but even more by zooming in and by just holding the target at the same spot and optimizing uh, that ratio. So it's pretty important to figure out what the trend is and if you're trading a rear reversal or just a a bounce, a pullback within the bigger trend. That's very important, as you can see, from R to R ratio. All right, so another tool that you can use, let's take a look at the pound yen example, is my WIS tool. WIS tool is really great because it shows you where is the, the zone that I could expect the most acceleration with the trend. Right. So it's uh, it's a tool I developed for my own trading, and as you can imagine, I'm a big fan of it, uh, and I'm really uh, enjoying it. Angel, if you like the the fractal indicator, then I'm not sure if you have this with tool, but that could be something to look into for yourself as well. I think that if you like the fractal one, you might like the with tool uh, as well. So let's take a look at that uh, example on. Uh, the four-hour slash daily chart, okay? So let's take a look at price turning right here and bouncing the second time, all right? And figuring out where could be the best exit. Yeah, sorry. I'm going to show the two right now. I'm just uh, having some, <laughs> I'm hitting the wrong button all the time. I'm hitting this button instead of this button. And my mouse coordination is not uh, working today. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, finally. So it's called the WIS tool. Uh, I've talked about it in a couple of webinars before. So probably some of you already know it. It's excellent for targets. I really, really highly recommend it. And I will add my email address in just a second so that you can uh, ask for it for free of charge, no problem. And basically, what I do is drag it to the bottom or top nearest to the moving average, at or nearest to the moving average. With near, I mean at is clear, it's touching it. For an uptrend, price would have to be below it, not above it. If it stays above it, it doesn't count. I drag it to the bottom. I uh, keep it on buy because I'm looking for upside targets. I click on OK. All right. And I get targets. I get targets based on FIB sequence levels. And uh, I, I understand where the biggest reaction or impulse could be expected based on this tool. And the biggest reaction could be expected once price is above on the pound yen above the fourth level. This is zero. This is the pink. This is the base. This is the starting spot. This is level one because it's the first purple line from the pink. This is level two, three, four, five, six. And the best momentum typically on the pound yen is between the fourth and the fifth and the fifth and the sixth level. With the euro dollar and other sm slower moving currency pairs, I would say it's between the third and the fourth and the fourth and the fifth. But on the pound yen, because it's such a Ferrari, it's such a big mover, uh, I like to use one zone higher than that. So. You can see, look at this move right here, between three and five. Here, between five and six. So where could we expect the biggest acceleration? Not here, right? So there we have to be patient or aim for a lower target. Uh, where can we expect acceleration and aim for a higher target when price breaks above these levels? And then we also know that we could easily aim uh, or at least use it as a confluence tool to aim for a, a high target. Maybe when entering here, you have one-to-one -one in mind, but uh, as you see, the price is breaking above the fourth level, you actually aim for, for this level, right? So you're more flexible in aiming for targets that go beyond what you think is maybe possible for that uh, particular trend. Because often trend accelerates what we expect. It goes further than 
well, at least for me it does, I guess for most of you too, it kind of pushes further than we think the trend can go. We think that with uh, 80 pips, it's great. We already made money with that. And let's close the trade and lock it in. But if there's a trade going on, you might want to consider what if it, it really starts to accelerate? What if it breaks above this? Let's wait and see if it can reach this level. Let's put a target there at not plus 80, but plus, plus 500. And uh, okay, it won't be, it will take, it, take a while. It will certainly be uh, a lengthy process, but it's going to be great for the reward to risk. Of course, that's a bit, quite a high example, but even if you get 200, 300, it's a big difference with getting 80 and big boost to the equity curve. And this WIS tool can help you understand where those zones are. There's a lot more to, the, to this particular uh, tool than I just mentioned, but I don't want to, you know, that's not the right time right now to go through all of that. We have special webinars dedicated to this particular script that explain it all. So I would uh, direct you to that instead, and you can review it in that particular webinar. The name is called Wiz. It's just a name we made up for it, our own uh, invention. And if you're interested in that particular script, it's the script that you add to the charts, feel free to write me. Right there. Uh, so, for instance, uh, if if you see that uh, the market is uh, in this phase already between the third and fourth, right? That is getting very close to a scenario where we're in a breakout to the upside. So it would be much better to aim here than aim here, for instance. Uh, it could make sense to aim for a larger target. Or if we aim, for instance, here, we look here, sorry, at the, this particular bull flag and correction, right? Where do we want to aim? Not here, right? Probably here. So we can uh, optimize the exit, get 240 uh, instead of 120, for instance, etc. We can take a look at gold and see what's going on. So we have a support level. We know that price is at support. Do we have a candlestick reaction to the support level? No, we don't. This is a small bullish candle. It's an inside candle. Doesn't count in my view. There's a strong bearish candle before that. So, so far we don't have the reaction to this zone and would not consider that to be an entry. Uh, but we have an example, of course, above here, resistance, right? Price reacts to the resistance. So if you think that the candlestick pattern is not strong enough, you don't have to take the candle close. You can take the candle low or zoom in uh, and talk about, look at the breaks of moving average and trend lines uh, to, or, or, Bollinger Bands or Keltner or Parabolic for an entry. And in this case, we had a small little correction right here. This candle broke it and down it goes. So that was a successful reaction to that zone. So setting up those zones basically I think is, uh, is that not that complicated, but you do need to, I think, just get used to the fact of using tops and bottoms, trend lines, fibs. I think those are the best. Wiz, of course, as a supportive tool as well. Pivot points, all of those help along uh, with uh, assessing how strong the support resistance levels are. So at this moment, price is approaching support. That's a bounce or break spot. If it bounces, that could be reason to look for a continuation back to the weekly pivot point, for instance. Any other particular pair you have in mind that you think could be interesting on a daily chart? I'm not sure how many of you are looking at daily charts. Uh, probably makes sense to continue selling, although I think that at this moment it's too close to support. I think that the best trade ideas were in this zone or this reaction here or after this consolidation or after this breakout. Now, Although I think that there's a good chance of a breakout considering this candle. 
Uh, I think that some some pullback would be neat, like the S1. That would be a sweet if it could get up there and turn around to position a basically better entry and then try to see if it can continue lower. So daily daily chart, of course, very valuable in its information. All the daily candles you see have some kind of value. Uh, and especially if they get into decision zones, these particular daily candles are really uh, very powerful, very informative, provide a lot of information to us. So that's the advantage of trading on the daily chart. The disadvantage, of course, is that, well, if you look at it uh, from day to day, there are going to be some things that are interesting. There are going to be some setups, of course, throughout the week. But there are going to be many uh, times that you're looking and looking and looking. And, of course, nothing is particularly happening because it just takes quite long for these formations to form. So you can use the same candlestick patterns, although with time frames, but you would need more confidence to compensate that. And you would need to understand, uh, basically, that uh, the daily candles just have more value. You can look at a one-hour, of course, uh, support zone and look for a candlestick reaction at that. But just keep in mind that you want to see some uh, some confluence there to compensate the lower time frames. Your cat, excellent. Let's take a look at that. All right, there we go. Good. So we had a reaction to this top and uh, good momentum, but the reversal came, pushed lower, pulled back, pushed lower. Price seems to get, seems to be close to support with the moving average to Keltner, this trend line. All right, so I'm not, I don't think it's that particularly strong, but it could be considered to be a support zone right here. Um, and price might react to that. Problem is that resistance is pretty close by too. So one thing you want to keep an eye on is when trading bounces is that if the bounce happens and price is still close to it, other support or resistance levels that you think is important, you might want to skip that bounce. So that's something to consider. The same with the breakout. We haven't talked about breakout that much in this, this webinar. I wanted to focus on bounces more, but if there is a breakout and the breakout price is basically close to the next support or resistance level. Here too, you might want to skip that one uh, as price is, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically too close to, to see any space for reward to risk ratios. That's what it boils down to. So you might want to forget that then, um, depending on the circumstances. You could still maybe zoom into a lower time frame, try to catch a, a, a trade on those time frames to see, and then you might be able to get a reward to risk that makes sense. Right, that's possible. But on this time frame, that wouldn't make sense. Um, so always keep an eye on, on the trend and support of resistance, because if the trend is up, then smaller resistance or support will not be that important. If you're trading reversals, then it could be more important to be a bit more cautious with reversals and trading um, reversals too soon. That happens very quickly. So get a lot of confluence, aim for a reasonable target, get out, let's say, relatively quickly, and uh, make sure that you're not trading into some, some strong support resistance levels um, that, that could stop that reversal. So from this perspective, might be looking for a bullish candlestick pattern here, for instance, engulfing twin, but then you got resistance close by, so we need to zoom in to a time frame. So we're, we're probably looking for some pattern like this, for instance, on the EuroCAD, like that, and try to trade this bounce, and try to get a two to one reversal R2R two there.
any other currency pairs? One more, and I think we'll wrap it up for today. Target for gold, I didn't actually talk about that. One second. Yeah, 1208. Uh, yeah, I wanted to check what I thought about that target. I think, uh, yeah, I think I already talked about that. Actually, yesterday, 1214, right? And 1175, I have in mind. Any other currency pair you want to take a look at? By the way, pound, your dollar, your dollar, not so much. It is reacting now. It did break through the weekly point by a bit. But they are getting some bounce finally, taking uh, its time. Let's see how the event will uh, push this up or down. I mean, my bias is still up. But it's slow and hasn't really done much you know, for that as yet. Dollar yen. Okay, let's take a look at the dollar yen otherwise. I'll choose. Resistance level, Keltner. So it could be considered a, a bouncing spot, and uh, but strong momentum before it, so reversal. And uh, we'd need to see probably some candles, bearish candle, before trading this potentially to the downside, because for the moment the trend is up. And uh, although candlesticks are very strong, very, very powerful in analyzing, realize that they're not perfect. Look at this bearish candle right here. And a lot of people might have thought that that could be uh, the end of the upside and still pushed for many pips after that to the upside. And then it got to reversal. So be careful of that. Look for confluence. Besides candlestick patterns, do look for strong support and resistance zones, point of confluences, because if we have those, the likelihood of a reaction uh, turning out to be correct is a lot higher. And we'll uh, you know, basically avoid false bounces or false breakouts in general. All right, so this is a good example uh, of, of a dollar and false, false bounce in a way. We can talk about uh, breakouts next week a bit more. Uh, this, this week we looking at uh, bounces, we can look at breakouts, how to trade those uh, a week from now. Uh, but uh, for the moment, you can see bounce pretty good here, bounce pretty good. Just need to find uh, good ways to locate strong support and resistance levels. This was very sweet right here. But I don't think it's necessarily a, a strong uh, support zone on the pound dollar. So you don't want to keep an eye. You don't want to lose that uh, particular uh, thought. All right. Always look at the analysis first. Look for strong zones. Then wait for a price reaction at that zone. All righty, folks. That wraps up uh, our webinar with regard to candlestick and Fibonacci patterns. We'll be back next week. Looking forward to take a look at breakouts. And uh, if I hope, let me write that down. Otherwise, I might forget about that. And uh, wish you all great trading. Make sure to check out Admiral Markets, Pivot Points, and Keltner. Those are two indicators, part of the MT4 Supreme Edition, which you can find here at platforms at admiralmarkets.com. Click on MT4 Supreme Edition. And uh, there are 60 other features that you might find interesting. So definitely worth your time. We show great trading, and uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Cheers.